Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Winterlock, and today we're going to be doing our second video in our multi-part series on Azure policies where we're going to be looking at custom policies and initiatives. Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about Azure policy again. We're going to be talking about custom policy in this multi-part series that we're doing on Azure policy. So today we're just going to basically have a long extended demo where I'm going to be talking about how to create Azure policies. I'm going to walk you through a few of them that I created already and I'm going to walk you through the code. And then we're going to go into the Azure portal, create some policies, create an initiative, and then try to create a VM and then play with those policies and see how they work inside the context of a resource group where I've applied an initiative as a policy to the resource group. So the first policy I want to look at is the policy that will require a virtual machine to have attached to it a network security group. So the network security group is one of those things that is optional on a NIC, but I want to require that the NIC have it. Every VM requires a NIC, so the NIC will always be present regardless of what VM I create but it's not gonna require a network security group. I wanna change the behavior of Azure so that it will require that a network security group be attached to that particular network interface when it is created. So that's what this policy is gonna do. This is a fairly basic policy and it's got some components that I wanna walk through. First thing is the mode, that's generally gonna be set to all in most cases, but the real meat and potatoes of this is in this next section here, which is in this policy rule, which is what defines what we have as a condition and then the effect of that condition. So the condition right here under the policy rule attempts to match the criterion here against properties in Azure Resource Manager and against the expected values that you're gonna be having inside of those particular properties. So what this one is trying to do is saying, if all of these things are true, then deny whatever this is trying to work on from happening. So in this case, what this is trying to match then is for all of the network interfaces, that's what this is looking for. So it's basically looking for a network interface right here. It's checking to see if the property network security group ID exists. If it doesn't exist, then this will be true. And so if this is true, then it will deny the creation of this network interface and that will actually fail a deployment of a VM because there's no NIC associated with the virtual machine. So the rule here is saying you must have a network security group attached to the NIC because if there is one, this will come back as true and this whole statement then will be false and then it will allow it through. So that's the logic here for what this particular policy is trying to accomplish. So it's a very simple policy, but it does work at enforcing the nature of what I'm trying to do by making sure that this NIC has a network security group attached to it. Now, it doesn't validate the network security group. That's downstream of what this is actually going to attempt to do. This is just making sure that the property exists. And then if it does exist downstream of this, it will make sure that that network security group is a valid network security group and everything else according to whatever validations Microsoft does for a network security group on Azure. But this is just making sure that the NIC does point to one. And if it does, then it's fine. If it doesn't, it will deny the creation of the network interface and therefore will fail the deployment of the VM in that case. So for the second policy, the one that I want to set up to allow only certain ports is a little bit more involved than the first rule that I created. So this one starts off like the other one where I have mode all set. And then I have this policy rule right here that we saw in the, in the last one as well. And I also have the if block. Now this one has a few nested blocks in it that I want to talk about because this one only had a very simple rule basically matching for network interfaces and making sure that there was network security group id field set this one is doing a little bit more so what it's doing is it's setting up some kind of looping structures using a couple of those keywords as well so basically if all of network security rules so that's doing a basically a lookup for all of the security rules. And then inside the context of that set, those security rules, if these parameters are matched, then it's going to do some 
tests against these, and then it's going to deny. So these rules go as follows. I have an all of again. So it's basically looking in all of the security rules for rules that have access set to allow, direction set to inbound. So that's basically all of my inbound rules that allow traffic in. And then it's going over the array of ports that I have defined in that rule. So basically it's saying for all the rules that are inbound allow rules, loop over the ports that are defined in that though, so that any of those that are not in this will, will match this rule as being true. So if it is true, then it's going to deny it. So it's basically make, making sure that anything that has inbound, uh, inbound allow and has a port that is not in the, the predefined list, it will make this whole thing true uh, with all those criterion, and then it will deny that rule from being created. And so that's what this rule is doing. Now, this one does have one additional feature that I didn't have on the other one, and that's this parameters right here. What the parameter right here allows me to do is when I create the policy, I put this in the policy definition. Then when I go to assign the policy, I have to set the parameter rules based on the policy assignment. So this will allow me to have the same policy used in multiple places. For instance, if I wanted to use it for web servers, I could say allow port 443 and port 80. And if I wanted to use the same rule in a different resource group, say I had database servers running on VMs, I could use it on port 1433 for SQL Server or 3306 for MySQL or whatever the database server might be. So you can use the same policy with different parameters and get different results, but it will have the same effect on the ports that it's trying to match inside of this rule. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I want to create my first policy definition uh, using policy. Now I've already created the resource group that I'm going to be using for this. So it's called policy demo, but I'm going to go to policy to create the actual policy definitions. Now, if you want to get this, you can click up here in the bar. If it's already up here, if not, you can look under more services, go over here to all services and you can look for it on this page, which is, you know, a lot of different things that you can have here. But you know, the easiest way right here is just to type in policy and search for it up here and click on it. And then that'll bring you to the policy dashboard. And let's go over here to the definitions. And this is where I actually start creating the policies. Last week, we looked at creating one from the built-in policies, but today we're going to be using a custom policy. So let's go to policy definition right here. So I'm going to add a policy definition. So I'm going to select the subscription that I want to use for this. And I'm going to then uh, use that for the location. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to VM require uh, NSG and say, and then I'm going to give it a description requires that VMs have an NSG associated with them. And that's my description. And this is going to be a category. I could stick this in compute or networking. I guess you could put it either one. Uh, I'm just going to stick it in networking because it's kind of a networking policy. And then I'm going to grab the JSON data from over here. And I'm just going to si simply copy this and then come back over here to my policy definition, paste it in. And then I think I can come down here and save it. And that is going to create my policy definition. So if I come over here and I filter by custom, there's my VM requiring SG. So let's add another policy definition here. And this is going to be um, NSG uh, allowed ports. Ports. And as and then the description is going to be only allow ports in a um, list in a predefined list. So that's what it's going to be. And I'm going to use existing here. I can stick this in networking. That seems like a good spot for it. And then I'm going to go over here to my JSON data and grab this. And I'm going to then uh, come back over here to my policy definition and paste it in. So this is just basically creating the policy definitions for these particular uh, policies that I'm going to be working with. And we've already walked through the details of these. So let's just save these and let's make sure oh, I need to uh, give it a location. Let's put that in the uh, subscription that I want to use and let's save it. And there I now have two custom policies created. Now I'm going to create an initiative from these two policies. So an initiative, as we've uh, discussed before, is a group 
of policy. So let's go through this process. So I'm gonna click on an initiative de definitions. I'm going to give this one a location and I'm going to choose the same subscription here. And this is going to say uh, VM NSG rules and this is gonna require um, NSG requirements uh, requirements for VMs. And that's what I'm going to call, give this a, a subscription here and give it a name, give it a description. And I'm gonna stick this one again in networking for my particular use case here. And I'm just gonna sign it version one and the policies here are where I can then add in the actual policies that I can add uh, for this particular initiative. So I'm gonna go down and choose the two that I have created here. So let's scroll down. They should be at the bottom usually. I'm gonna select these two policies and add those in. And it's gonna give me a reference ID and I, you know, I can actually have groups within an initiative. Uh, I can have initi initiative groups that allows me to have uh, a, a taxonomy if I have a lot of different policies in this particular, in a given initiative. I only have two policies, so that's more than I need for this one. And um, I don't have any uh, initiative parameters here, um, but I will have some policy parameters that I need to set up. So the NSG uh, allow ports are the ports that are gonna be allowed within the context of that particular policy. So I'm gonna come over here and define this uh, using the actual uh, editor here. Now this is an array, so it's an array of numbers. So I'm gonna allow for port 443, let's say port 80, and uh, port 22, and let's say port 3389. So those are some common ports that are used in VMs on Azure. Those are the only ports I wanna allow. Anything outside of that gets denied. So let's go ahead and save that and this policy parameter will be set up and I can review and create this initiative and let's go ahead and set that up. And there is my new initiative that I have now. So now that I have an initiative created, I can now create an assignment for this initiative and we'll do that. Okay, now let's create an assignment for that initiative that I created. I've created two policies. I have an initiative combined for those policies. So let's go ahead and create an assignment for those policies. So let's go ahead and set the basics. I'm gonna give it a scope. And as I mentioned in my last video, you can have something up at the EA level, you can apply it to the subscription level, or you can apply it to a resource group level. Since this is not a enterprise agreement account or anything like that, I'm just going to um, use the resource group level and use this one right here, policy demo, and I'm gonna select that for the scope for this particular uh, demo that I'm doing here. I can have exclusions if I want to, but this is fine for what I'm doing here. And I'm going to select all of the policy enforcements on and assigned by Blaze. There are no parameters, so I don't have to set any parameters for this. There's no remediations that I'm gonna apply here. I'm just going to simply review and create and go ahead and assign this particular policy initiative to that resource group. I'm here in the resource group that I want to create my resources in that I created that initiative for. If I click on policies here, you can see I have my initiative right here and I can drill down into that, of course, and see the, the various components of that by way of policy. So I'm going to go back up to my policy demo resource group. The compliance isn't turned on because sometimes that takes a while to start, but usually about half an hour one after you create a given initiative. But I can create resources and will do policy enforcements, not just compliance checking for whenever I create resources against a policy. So I'm gonna create a VM here, and I wanna create a VM that doesn't have an NSG associated with it. So this will give me an error when I create this. That's what I really wanna see, is that error show up. So I'm gonna give it a uh, name, a VM name, and I'm gonna give it a username and password. And this is always fun to type in to make sure I get this right. And um, sometimes you can fat finger things. So let's uh, select none in inbound ports. I'm just gonna take the defaults on disks. Let's go over here to the networking tab. I'm going to select no public IP. I'm gonna disable NIC network security group. This is where I want the policy to trip up this particular deployment because I want this to fail. Uh, that's what I'm testing for this particular policy. So let's go ahead on to the management tab and I'm gonna disable monitoring, disable auto shutdown and all that stuff. And then finally click review and create. Now the validation will pass uh, because everything is valid as far as everything I've set up. What's not gonna work is once I hit click create, this is gonna crash whenever it tries to create, the deployment's gonna fail because that 
policy is going to prevent the NIC from creating and therefore the VM won't get created and there it crash pretty quickly right away. So if I come over here and look at the reason for this particular issue, I come back in here and you will look at the raw error, you're going to see uh, the, the disallowable of the policy and it's going to show me details about the policy here. VM NIS G rules uh, ID right here, VM NIS G, that's the, the policy initiative that it is failing against. Now, the particular one is not really showing me uh, the issue that I have, but it's because I don't have that particular NSG set. So that's the policy definition there. It's against the initiative. So if I go back and try to create a VM again, this time I'm going to create a VM uh, with this particular deployment right here. I'm going to come over here to add. I'm going to add Ubuntu server, and I'm going to call it VM1 again. And this time I am going to attempt to create this one and I'm going to give it an NSG so that I'll be sure to create that one. So let's go ahead and set the uh, username and password right here. And let's go over here. I'm gonna select none right here. And let's go over to the networking tab. I'm gonna use advanced right here. And then I'm going to look at what I have set here Port 22 is in my allowed uh, incoming port range that I set up when I set up my policy. So that one should be fine. I'm just going to click OK right here. And that will create an NSG for the NIC. And I'm going to disallow, I'm going to turn off public IP addresses here. And I can leave that as is the rest of that anyway. And disable monitoring, turn off auto shutdown. And then we can just go over here to review and create. And this will validate as well, but when I click create here, this should work because now I have a network security group associated with my NIC. And so that rule, that policy is going to check this one. So let's go ahead and click create here and let this finish and then we'll come back when it's done. So now that my VM has deployed, I want to test the second policy that I created. Now I did create a network security group that had a port 22 open that was inbound. So that did validate against the rules, but I want to test it to make sure that the rule actually works. So to do that, what I can do in that case is come down here to my network security group and I can try to create a rule that is outside of the four allowed ports that I had. I opened up 22, 443, 3389 and port 80. So I should be able to create just some port that is outside that range. So let's go over here to inbound ports and let's try to create one such as port 8080. And I can just take the defaults on this though so that should work. Uh, to demonstrate that this is actually working. So I can see here that from this that I have a port that is outside the range. So let's go over here to this particular failed to create this rule right here. And uh, let's go in and look at that particular notification. Failed to create this rule. If I can go down here to see more, I, it says the NSG allowed ports. Uh, and then, you know, the, the reason for that is because it was outside of that port range. So I know that that is enforcing that particular rule within the context of my network security group that I have right here. So this is working. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.